Did you hear? Across Africa, a new wave of Gen Z protests is sweeping the continent, igniting fires of dissent from Kenya with hashtag Ruto must go, to Nigeria with hashtag Tenubu must go, to Gambia, to South Africa, and even spreading to smaller nations like Eswatini and Zimbabwe. Imagine the roar of a generation united by a single purpose, ready to shake the very foundations of society. The streets filled with determined young faces, banners aloft as cries for justice echo against the buildings. This isn't just about one nation, it's a continent-wide rebellion against corruption, failed leadership, kidnapping, as the case of gruesome discovery of mutilated bodies dumped in a Nairobi rubbish tip in Kwera area, Mukuru Kwa, Kenya, and economic despair. Why now? What has driven this generation to rise up so fiercely? Can these movements achieve real change following this pathetic case in Kenya, or will they be crushed like so many before them? Watch and subscribe as we unleash this mysteries. We begin with Kenya. The streets of Nairobi have become a battleground as young Kenyans rise up against not just the finance bill of 2024, but a failed leadership in security and harsh tag end femicide ravaging all social networks. Starting with the bill proposed tax hikes that sparked outrage among the youth, leading to intense clashes with the police. Over 200 people were arrested, including journalists and rights observers. But it is worthy to note that President Ruto responded to the outcry by making amendments to the bill. It seemed like a victory, but was it just a move to pacify the protesters? Amidst the mounting pressure, Ruto was forced to dissolve his cabinet, a significant shakeup in his administration following weeks of anti-government protests in which at least 39 people were killed during clashes with the police. Despite these changes, the Gen Z activists are not backing down. They demand more than just economic relief. They want systemic change. They call for better governance, an end to corruption, and more opportunities for the youth. Can Ruto's government meet these demands, or is this just the beginning of a prolonged struggle? Recently, the discovery of eight bodies in Quer dump site in Nairobi has further fueled the anger. These young women, aged between 18 and 30, were found under suspicious circumstances. The question is, are we dealing with occult, serial illers, rogue medical practitioners, or is there something even more sinister at play? An unverified report tweeted by Maguna Maguna alleged that President Ruto had ordered the killing and cremation of 400 people in Githurai on June 25th, right after shutting down the internet. This claim has not been substantiated, but it raises significant concerns. The DCI boss, Amin, has confirmed the recovery of the bodies and promised a thorough investigation. My officers, the homicide uh, detect, uh, uh, detectives, were able to access uh, the crime scene. Uh, we were able to recover a total of uh, eight bodies, six plus the two of yesterday, <laughs> at a various level of uh, decomposition. So you will realize that uh, the murders apparently was almost the same. In terms of, if you look at the age, between 18 to 30, if you look at the gender, these are all female. If you look at the way the bodies have been disguised and packaged, all the same. If you look at the place the bodies were thrown into the dump site, just one spot, I get the same. So what are we really looking at? Are we dealing with a cult? that is associated with criminal activities. Are we dealing with uh, serial killers that are also associated with criminal activities? Or even, could we be dealing with rogue medical practitioners that are dealing with criminal activities? All, the, all these are hypotheses that, as investigators, we have uh, tried to, to, to bring on board. 
we have deployed our best investigators, our home set chain, which is one of the best, which and as a country we should be proud of. I'm convinced that in the fullness of time, we are going to address this problem, go to the bottom of this matter. So mind is to act like the acting the IG has said, to have patience and collaboration from the members of the country. While awaiting in Githurai today, a group of youths have found more than 20 lifeless bodies in sacks and others in polythene papers dumped in pit near Quare police station. According to reports, more bodies are expected. Will justice be served for these young women? Is there a cover-up or will the truth finally come to light? While battling with this, the Nigeria Gen Z are not backing out in their protest having influenced by Kenya Gen Z. The protests are fueled by anger over bad governance, high cost of living, and soaring inflation. The price of fuel has skyrocketed, exacerbating the struggles of daily life for many Nigerians. The protests is currently ongoing and are set to massively begin in August, with citizens rallying for significant changes. The government we go. We will do what Africa has not done before. We don't care about the constitution. We don't care about P2B. We don't care about Atiku. We will take the leadership, everything that is called Senate, everything, everything that came with this government, everything that came with 2023 election, we go. Everything. If one person die in this thing, everything that came with this thing, and let me tell you, this protest is not the one we will do. After one week, we go. We, we fire to the fire. <laughs> we will fire to the You see the way we have started discussing protests now. Very soon, all species will be hosting. 50,000 Nigerians will be on space from all over the world. The funding will be there. The lawyers will be there. If you lock up anybody, the person will be brought out. The lawyers will be there to follow up the court. Anything you want, fire to fire, money for money, anything you want, we will, we will fund this protest more than the elections. What you saw in 2023 is just play to what is cooking. Because this is a fight for Nigerians. It is not... We, in fact, let me... Citizens rallying for significant changes. The question remains, will these protests lead to meaningful reform, or will they be violently suppressed like the end SARS protests in 2020? The end SARS movement, which started as a call to end police brutality, ended in tragedy with the Lekki Tollgate massacre, where soldiers opened fire on peaceful protesters. The current protests echo the same frustrations, but with an added layer of economic despair. The memories of 2020 are still fresh, and the fear of another brutal crackdown looms large. In Gambia, the youth are rallying against alleged electoral malpractices and economic hardship. President Adama Barrow's administration has been accused of failing to deliver on its promises, leading to widespread discontent. The government's response to past protests has been harsh, raising concerns about what might unfold this time. Will the Gambian youth see their demands met, or will they face the same brutal repression as before? South Africa is witnessing its own wave of protests against corruption and unemployment. President Cyril Ramaphosa has pledged reforms, but the youth remain skeptical. Past promises have often gone unfulfilled, and the current administration's ability to address these deep-seated issues is in doubt. In Eswatini, formerly known as Swaziland and Zimbabwe, protests are emerging against long-standing autocratic regimes. The youth are demanding democratic reforms and economic justice. The responses in these nations have historically been severe, with heavy-handed crackdowns on any form of dissent. Across Africa, the Gen Z protests represent a powerful call for change. The youth are demanding a future free from corruption and economic despair. The question is, will their governments listen, or will we see a repeat of past brutalities? How far are these young activists willing to go, and what sacrifices will they have to make to achieve their dreams? 
As these movements continue to grow, the eyes of the world are on Africa. This is a pivotal moment in the continent's history. Will these brave young people usher in a new era of justice and prosperity, or will their cries for change be silenced? Only time will tell. But one thing is certain. The Gen Z protests are a powerful testament to the enduring spirit of youth and their relentless pursuit of a better future. What do you think? Will these movements bring about real change? Or are we witnessing another cycle of repression? Drop your thoughts and comments below. If you are still not following us, you are probably never going to see us again. But if you are, congrats. You are on a journey of discovery as we unlock the mysteries of the past. 